When Howard Carter peered into a sealed tomb in 1922 and saw wonderful things, he didn't just find gold, he found a mystery. He had discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun, the boy king who died suddenly around the age of 19. For decades, his death sparked wild theories of murder and palace intrigue. But today, modern science is peeling back the layers of this ancient cold case. Advanced imaging and genetic sequencing are painting a tragic and far more believable picture of King Tut's final days. So what does the evidence tell us? A major study in 2010 revealed a portrait of a physically vulnerable pharaoh. Genetic analysis showed his parents were siblings, a royal practice that likely led to an accumulation of malformations. Scans suggested he suffered from a severe bone disease in his left foot, where bone tissue dies from a lack of blood supply. This, combined with a potential club foot, led researchers to conclude he couldn't walk without help. The evidence, over 130 walking sticks found in his tomb, many showing clear signs of use. However, this isn't a settled debate. Some experts argue the foot deformities are just postmortem artifacts from tight burial wrappings and that walking sticks were symbols of status, not necessarily medical aids. The question of his baseline health remains a point of contention. Layered on top of his physical condition was a confirmed chronic illness. Genetic tests found DNA from Plasmodium falciparum, the parasite that causes the most severe form of malaria. This would have subjected Tutankhamun to recurring cycles of high fever, chills, and severe anemia, leaving his immune system constantly compromised but here's the thing, malaria was incredibly common in ancient Egypt. While debilitating, it wasn't usually a death sentence for a young adult. It was more like a constant, draining stressor, leaving the king in a permanently weakened state. So what was the final event that pushed him over? The edge, the most compelling clue comes from a catastrophic injury. CT scans revealed a severe fracture on his left leg, an open wound that showed no signs of healing. This means it happened right before he died, in the 14th century BC. An injury like this was a medical disaster. Without tourniquets, he could have bled out, especially since his malaria-induced anemia meant any blood loss was far more dangerous. And even if he survived the initial trauma, the open wound was a gateway for infection. Sand and bacteria could have easily caused sepsis, a massive blood infection that would have been a virtual death sentence for a king whose body was already fighting off malaria. So, the modern scientific consensus isn't a single, dramatic cause of death. It was a perfect storm. Tutankhamun's death was a fatal cascade of events that his weakened body simply couldn't overcome. The most likely sequence starts with a frail foundation, compromised by congenital issues from his parents being siblings. This may have included painful, bone disorders affecting his mobility. Next, a compromised immune system, thanks to a chronic, severe strain of malaria that left him anemic and weak. Then, the final blow, a sudden, severe open leg fracture, perhaps from a fall. The shock, the blood loss, and a probable overwhelming infection proved to be too much for his malaria-ravaged body to handle. This composite theory, backed by both genetic and radiological evidence, is the most complete answer we have. It replaces sensational stories with a more intimate and somber reality. The story of Tut's death isn't one of conspiracy, but of human frailty. Of course, the science continues. Some researchers have proposed an alternative hypothesis, sickle cell disease. This inherited blood disorder can also cause bone tissue death and is common in malaria-prone regions as it offers some resistance to the parasite. This ongoing debate is what good science is all about. But for now, the investigation has stripped away the myth to reveal the mortal boy behind the golden mask, a young king who ruled a great empire but couldn't defeat the combined forces of genetics, disease, and injury. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this journey into the past, don't forget to like and subscribe.